You all know the drill. Another player breakdown, another deep dive. We're going to do two today. Two for the price of one on this episode. We're going to do the Castro. Well, uh, they're not brothers, but everybody likes to call them brothers. We're going to look at Harold and Willie Castro. Talk about the seasons that they had, where their value lies, and talk about their future with the Detroit Tigers organization. Willie and Harold Castro, today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Okay, so today I was kind of doing my show prep and everything this morning, and I was looking through, you know, do I have to do the deep dive myself before I do the deep dive on air, obviously, and uh, I didn't think that there was enough really to fill an entire 30 on Willie or Harold by themselves because I think that they're relatively straightforward in the sense that most people understand the types of players that they are I think there is a, a a very fascinating conversation about what to do with both of them going forward I think that's uh, one of the more underrated kind of storylines in this offseason and we will certainly get to that in the third and final segment but I think when it comes to to breaking down the types of players that they are, I don't think there's any surprises or there certainly weren't any like crazy, oh my goodness, if somebody just made this adjustment, look at what would happen. Like this fascinating deep dive conversation with either of them individually. But I think that they are a, besides the fact that they have the same last name, a fascinating conversation to have together because I think a lot of people kind of clump them just in together in the same boat as far as, their roles on the team, their value on the team, and what to do with them going forward. So I just thought that it was a it was a kind of a good opportunity to, and it just made sense to to kind of talk about them in the same breath here. Uh, so let's start. Who do we want to start with? I think we'll start with Willie. Um, so Willie Castro acquired for half a season of Leonis Martin a few trade deadlines ago. What was that 2019? 29 or was it 2018 maybe even he was really young um and now he is 25 years old switch hitter obviously kind of turned into more of a pure utility player in the last this season but also started last season but really took that big step this season played a plethora of different positions the frustrating thing about willie castro it well i'm sure if you asked people that 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 there would be probably be a lot of answers to that question but one of the frustrating things about Willie Castro is that he has the tools like he has the the ability to be a pretty darn good ball player like when you when you're talking about about tools and you're talking about intangible things right like like listen to this okay this is via his his baseball savant page 78th percentile in sprint speed, okay? Top 22-ish percent in all of baseball in sprint speed. 87th percentile in arm strength, almost top 10 percentile in the league. 71st percentile in outfielder jump. And 79th percentile in max exit velocity. So just the hardest ball you hit all season. That's like the making of a toolsy, like, I don't want to say five tool because I feel like that's kind of thrown around too much, but that's the making of a player that is really effective in a lot of different areas and can be really valuable to their team. The problem is in the batter's box, he was in the first percentile in average exit velocity, 79th in max exit velo, the hardest ball he hit all year is one of the top 20% hardest in all of baseball. But his average exit velo was quite literally in the bottom 1% of the league, 10th percentile in hard hit percentage. 
Expected batting average, 72nd percentile. Again, not bad. Expected slugging percentage, 11th percentile. Barrel percentage, 10th percentile. Walk percentage, 3rd percentile. Chase rate, 4th percentile. Whiff, 24th percentile. Bottom quarter of the league. Like, it, it's... That is, to me, why why he has always been that in the defense, which we'll get to in a second. That has always been kind of the reasons why he's been so frustrating because you saw the glimpses and we saw the 2020, right? And, and he had a BABIP of like 9 million in 2020, right? Like I, I think his BABIP was literally like almost 400 or over 400 or something ridiculous in 2020 so you expected that to come down to earth a little bit batting average of balls in play uh for those who are unfamiliar um yeah like like almost 100 points higher than league average so like that was a little bit of just like oh everything was falling um but you have this this dude that that has the athleticism he has the tools he has the ability to get get good reads on balls he has the ability to hit the ball hard he just doesn't do any of them even remotely close to a consistent level or, or even a justifiably consistent level. I'm not even asking for every day. You know, if he, I mean, if he was doing the, the intangible stuff every single game, he, you know, he'd be an all-star, but it's, it's not even every day. It's not even once a week. It's not even like we see flashes like, Oh, a couple series a year. It's like, a few games a season and you're like, okay, <laughs> well, like that, that's great. It, it's just, it's not translating into production. And that's like, what, what use are good tools? What, what's the, what's the point of having good tools? If you're not turning them into good value and good production, uh, his war this season on fan graphs was 0.7. His war last season in 2021, I should probably stop saying last season. Now that last season is probably 2022. In 2022, 0.7 war. In 2021, an exactly 0.0 F4. In 2020, in 36 games, he had a 1.2 F4. And then in 30 games in 2019, he had a negative 0.2 war. So you're talking about a dude that if you take away the 60-game season is a 0.5 career war in 270 games. And that's if you take out like the 36 games he played in 2020 and, and, you know, was like what fifth for rookie of the year or sixth or rookie of the year, something ridiculous like that. Um, it, it just hasn't translated. And, and clearly we talked about one of the biggest reasons why is because of the walk percentage. He doesn't draw walks. He has an inability to. And when we're looking at the Scott Harris model, we're not keeping all these dudes, right? Like, I, I was trying to figure out a way to articulate this the other day, and I don't think I did a very good job. When I give my likelihood for certain players coming back, that is them in a, in a microscope, right? That's just them. Looking at them, are they going to? Obviously, all everybody I have like less than a five on is not all going to be gone, right? That's just my confidence that they will be gone. And... We're not keeping all these dudes that don't draw walks. Like, it's going to happen. I'm not saying we're going to get rid of all of them, but we're definitely getting rid of some of them. <laughs> there, there is no chance that in Scott Harris's first year, we're just going to roll out nine dudes who have a walk percentage of, like, 5% and worse. Like, it's not, it's not going to happen. And we've already talked about Jonathan Scope. We talked about Jamer's walk numbers plummeted this season. We're talking about Willie right now. We'll talk about Harold. Not exactly a walk drawing guy. We obviously we know like the the Javi Baez thing. I already said Jonathan Scope's name. Like it, it's not going to happen. We're, it's it's that's not how this is going to work. We know his model not to a T because we need to see an off season of work before we're really like, hey, what's a Scott Harris player? But just by what we know so far and the small moves that he has made. Dominate the strike zone. When you're either A, striking out a lot, B, not walking at all, or C, both, that's not exactly dominating the strike zone. And I think that that's where a lot of Willie's, just his future with the team is in much more question than 
maybe it would be if he was walking a little bit more. And his career walk rate, like, it is usually sits around 5%. This was definitely a, a low season. Um, but also, 2019 and 2020, he played 30 games and 36 games. How much weight are we really putting into those? 2021, his first full season, he plays 125 games, had a 5.1% walk rate. This year in 112 games, had the 3.8. Yeah, there you go. BABIP in 2020, 448. It's like 150 points almost, better than league average. <laughs> it's in, insanity. The slugging percentage was 367. That's not very good. All right, ISO of 126. No, no power and no walks. I, I don't think that uh, somebody will take a chance on him. Somebody will take a chance on him and, and, and somebody, and again, it's still not out of the complete realm of possibility that it's the Detroit Tigers, but somebody will try and bring in a coach or bring in a, a bat swing person or, or, or hitting coach something and go, look, you have all the athleticism. You have the ability to be something we've seen you, you, you know, max exit velo. We've seen you crush baseballs. Do this and this, and we'll try to get this on a semi-consistent basis and maybe try to turn him into a you know a two-ish win player. But next year will be his age 26 season. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have a ton of confidence. He, here's how I'm going to award this. I don't think there's any way that Harold and Willie are both back. But... I don't think it's impossible for one of them to be back. It might even be likely. It might even be an over a five on both of them. We'll talk about it at the end. But there you go with Willie. We've, we've talked about the defense a lot in me being the host of this show. We have highlighted. That's probably the wrong words to use. But we have we have talked at, at length about Willie Castro's defense. And this season, in the outfield, admittedly he graded out like kind of league average ish right uh in the infield still not very good i mean we saw he it's an improvement it's certainly better than what was it 2020 when he was at shortstop i mean that was a, a one of the worst defensive shortstop seasons even though it was only 60 games and he only played in like half of those 60 i guess uh that that i mean that was a a abysmal defensive season at shortstop for him in 2020 and then last year when he was in the infield and trying to hop around he still didn't grade out very well this year he played a lot more outfield and he graded out like okay and again he has the athleticism too so like props you know if, if that's something that he can figure out that's gonna raise his value and then he'll make a push to to make a major league ball club um but just the combination of all of those you can't just keep dragging somebody along because they might turn into something like at some point we're going to be what in the in the fifth separate season of willie castro next year if he were to come back 2019 2021 20, 22 23 like at some point we got to start seeing some some results and i'm just not sure how much of a priority willie castro is going to be this offseason i don't think it's going to be very high so we will see We'll see what the future holds for him. Like I said, we'll talk about kind of the future of both of them at the end of the show. Let's get to Harold, hitting Harold, everybody's favorite. But first, I got to tell y'all about our friends over at betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for all your football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. As always, Betonline remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information. With live betting, up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, everybody. I forgot my water today. That kind of sucks. Usually I take a sip of water during ad breaks. I have no clue where my water is. Welcome back. Segment two, Locked on Tigers. Uh, appreciate each and every one of y'all. So talking about Willie and Harold, we kind of talked about Willie there and, and and his faults, but also the things that we can point at and go, there is still, like he will get an opportunity somewhere. He's only 25 and still has some, some maybe intangibles is like too dramatic of a word, but he has 
some semblance of like, hey, I can produce at the major league level. And, and, and there are some analytics that support him. It's just the actual production, right? It's like, it's like when people go into like the draft combine in the NFL and you have dudes that don't have very good college stats, but then just like run like a 4-2-40 and lead the entire draft class in vert. And you're like, oh, well, you know, let's take a chance on him. You know what I mean? Like that's that's kind of like what I compare Willie Castro to. He could, he could turn like there, there's something there, but we haven't seen anything even remotely close, to be honest with you, to the production that backs up those those measurables. And, and at some point, you're going to have to do that. Harold is a little bit of a different story. Uh, Harold doesn't really have the uh the the measurables and, and isn't like this great athlete or anything but he just shows up and puts the bat on the ball and makes stuff happen doesn't hit the ball very hard doesn't draw walks doesn't really barrel up the baseball too often but he does not swing and miss he does not strike out very often and he puts the ball in play like crazy now, the, the gripe that I have with Harold Castro is the fact that the fact that he plays multiple positions is, is great. That, that raises value just inherently, right? Like that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. It can't hurt to be good at multiple positions. The problem is he's not good at multiple positions. He plays multiple positions, but he's not actually good at like, I mean, not to be blunt, but like any of them. He grades out as a negative defender pretty much everywhere. And some of them are like pretty sizably negative. Third base, his de- no matter what metric you use, his defensive numbers at third are pretty brutal. Um, and, and he played a lot of third because of Jamer's struggles and whatnot. Um, I think at second, they're about league average-ish, which is great, fine, good. Need, need backup middle infield with this team for sure. Graded out really poorly at short, graded out negatively at first, and I think only played like 20, not even like 17, 18 innings of of uh, ball in the outfield this year. So not not too much, not too many numbers there. But it, like, it, it's it's great that he plays multiple positions. But this notion that he's just some like like oh you know you can play him anywhere that's so valuable. Like yeah, you you can stick him anywhere, but he's not like good anywhere. I don't know like that. That was just this weird narrative that was kind of going on in the fan base that I always wanted to kind of just be like, what What do you – it's one thing to pl- be able to put a body at any position. It's another one for actually – for that player to actually be valuable at that position. And he's not really a, a – he's not a plus defender anywhere. And he's pretty comfortably less than league average everywhere except second. So, like, I don't know. that That's not – really like the definition of versatility in my eyes. That's the, just like what I'm trying to say. That's not like, oh my goodness, like he, he he's some really versatile player with a ton of value because of that. Like, no, like I, I, I would like somebody who plays multiple positions and is at least like league average at like all the positions that he can play. Like that that's, doesn't seem like a very high bar when it comes to like utility men. When you look at the, the utility men that are playing for like playoff teams, like being at least league average everywhere, or even like if you're a negative one, like defender, if you use DRS or OAA at like every position and like don't make errors. Like if you're just even like a hair below league average everywhere, I'm like, okay, like sure. You're not a liability. I I, I don't want to talk this whole time just about defense because th- there's some offensive stuff that definitely needs to be spoken about with Harold as well. But that was just one thing that, that I – just drove me up a wall this year that like, and it's not Harold's fault, like whatever, but uh, the, just the fan base is like, Oh, like he, you know, he's so versatile. He's so valuable because he plays so many positions. He doesn't play any of them. Well, <laughs> so like, no, like not really. Um, offensively, we kind of touched on like expected batting average, 88th percentile, almost top 10% in the league and expected batting average. K percentage, uh, 71st percentile. Whiff percentage, 79th percentile. Now, chase rate, 6th percentile. But whiff rate, 79th percentile. So he will go fishing, and he will go, and, and he will 
he will chase, but he's still going to put the bat on the ball. So like that, that, that at least is some redeeming quality walk percentage, third percentile, not very good. We'll get to that in a second. Average exit velo 14th. We know he's not really a power hitter, uh, outs above average. There you go. First percentile in all of baseball, first percentile, bottom 1% in the league and outs above average eighth percentile in arm strength, played a lot of third base, not going to grade out very well. Um, when looking at Harold, and like I said, in the third segment, we'll get to the future of both of these dudes and kind of where they stand. So um, when when talking about Harold, I, I think it is important. <laughs> it's just funny looking him up, like here's his pitching numbers. Um, I, I think it's important to highlight the fact that he has had a negative war in like most of his career. He is a negative one win player in his career. Now, I know some people don't like war. Oh, that's too dramatic. That's not fair. This year with a 271 batting average, he was a negative 0 0.4 war. In 2021, with a 283 batting average, he was a negative 0 0.6 war. In 2020, in the shortened season, he was a 0 0.4. And in 2019, in 100 games, he was a negative 0 0.4. So in his career, all put together, according to Fangraph's war, he is a negative one win player and has only had a positive war for one season, and it was the shortened season of 2020. Now, how is that possible? You know, he, he had one of the higher batting averages on the team. Well, first off, that's kind of the point that, that a lot of people these days try to drive home about like batting average isn't really that fantastic of a stat. It's something that it's nice to compare to other stats, but on its own, it doesn't really mean a whole lot when it comes to like the value of a player. Um, and he doesn't walk at all. Like he, he 3.8% walk percentage last year, 4.1% 2019 and 100 games, 2.4%. Like he doesn't, he his career walk percentage is 3.7%, which was less than his 3.8 this year, which is terrible. Like he does not draw walks. Now he doesn't strike out too terribly much, which is uh, uh, fine, uh, I guess, but no power, no walks. How valuable is a ton of singles and negative defense, no matter where you put them. And and, it, and and again, it'd be one thing if he was hitting a ton of singles and he was leading the league in batting average. Like it'd be one thing if you know, oh, he's batting three forty and his slugging percentage is three eighty one, like it was this season, or it's three seventy seven, like it has been for his career. Like right, like that'd be one thing if he was like, hey, I'm a three forty hitter but my slugging percentage is 377. That's a totally different story. 284 career average, 271 this past year. I I don't know if a 270 batting average, that's all singles. He never gets on base unless it's a single because he never draws walks and is going to give you minus defense anywhere you put him. is really like a, a, a high priority. Again, like we're, we're looking – at raising the bar we're looking at this next season we need to raise our standards maybe this next season is is too dramatic but like in general this organization needs to raise its standards of like players and 270 of all singles with no walks and minus defense I, I'm not sure that that's really going to be at the top of the priority and he's about to be 29 years old I'm not sure that's at the top of the list of priorities for too many teams this offseason. Good off the bat, off the bench, that's the phrase, bat. Solid. I'm not trying to make this sound like a slam piece on Harold. He provided a lot of value this season, came up with some clutch hits, etc. At one point, he was in the he was a positive win player. And then in the second half of the season, honestly, like really struggled and kind of fell off a cliff there especially in august um so like that that definitely hurt his value but like this is is how many utility dudes do you need that's why i want to do these guys together like how many of this caliber of player do you need how many dudes do you need that are don't hit for power 
They hit for average, kind of. Like, they're above average in hitting for average, but they're not, like, league leaders in batting average or anything. They're just, like, I guess, like, middle of the road, slightly above league average batting averages with no power, with no walks, and with bad defense. How, how many of those players do you really need on your team to be competitive? Harold was a negative win player this season. And again, he's pushing 30 now. Okay, let's do one last ad break, and then uh, we're going to talk about the future of both of these dudes in the Detroit Tigers organization right after this. All right, everybody, we are back. Third and final segment here of Locked on Tigers. Um, Okay, so we're talking about Harold and Willie. We've done our deep dives on both of them. Um... Look, again, I don't I didn't want this to come across as like uh wow, these two dudes are like terrible or something. Like, no, they they provided value. They're they're dudes that that over the last couple of seasons have filled in roles that we have had holes in and have given off have given us good moments and have provided us value, undoubtedly. But I I mean and for whatever reason, Willie especially is just like randomly really controversial within this fan base. I don't know how it happened. I don't know why. I don't know who started it. I I have no clue. But at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to to improve. We are trying to get better. And I'm not sure two players who when you combine their war, it's about zero, is really like at, at the top of the list of like, oh, like, there's a lot of value you're letting go there. You're letting a, a 270 batting average walk out the door. It's important to put the bat on the ball. Sure, it is. I I agree with you. You can't strike out every time you go up there. But when 70% of the time, it's a weak ground out to second base. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I... I think we need to, again, uh, this has been the theme of the offseason so far, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record. I think we need to raise our standards. These are literally zero win, either barely better than zero war players or even negative war players. And I assure you, somebody is going to be like, no, we need to keep these guys. I, I know because everybody is has their own way they analyze the game of baseball, and that's what's beautiful about it. And and I welcome that truly, but in my eyes, I just I, like I'm um thank you for for what you did here. Thank you very much. Appreciate everything both of y'all did for the last couple of seasons. I'm good. Nice little handshake. Made made few hundreds of thousands of dollars playing baseball for the Detroit Tigers over the last couple of seasons. Thank you very much for what you did here. I, I would like my utility players going forward to at least be like, I don't know, a one win player. The fact that that is like a pretty sizable improvement from these two dudes we're talking about. And yet there, there are still people that would go to bat with them. Like I, I promise you when you see, like if you're watching the, the postseason, if you're watching the playoffs right now, you're watching a, a, and you see the elevated Play, not style of play, but but talent. You see the the elevated production. You see dudes that that are that are utility players for some of these teams, like the Dodgers and the Padres, and I I mean even you know the the Astros. Oh my goodness! Like you, you see those those guys on those teams that are you know playing 120 games utility man ball, and those are some some one one and a half sometimes even on the higher end two win players. You imagine having having a like one and a half two win player coming off your bench? That'd be sweet. That'd be awesome. And again, I think this might even be a different conversation if these guys were, you know, had one or two years of of MLB experience. But 2023 would be the sixth separate season that we will have seen Harold Castro in, and he will be 29 years old with one season of positive war under his belt 
at 29, and it was in 2020, and it will be the fifth separate season of Willie Castro, who has a career war of 1.6. I... I'm good, man. I'm good. So, like, when talking about the likelihood, um, I, I'm not, again, I'm not going to come on here and say, oh, this is a guarantee both of these dudes are gone. I don't think that that is, uh, I don't think that that is a extreme likelihood. It's possible. Don't get it twisted. But I, I think that it is, it, it's not something that we should be, necessarily hardcore expecting I would be pretty stunned to be honest with you if both of them came back however I think we have seen the last Detroit Tigers game in which the Castro bros in quotes are are both in the lineup together wearing an old English D I think that is probably gone I think that is probably done uh, if I had to do both of them individually, I mean, goodness, man. I, like, I don't even know. Not not that I, I know about the number I want to give both of them, but I don't even know if I could tell you which one is like slightly more likely or which one isn't. Neither of them do the dominate the strike zone thing that Scott Harris is, is supposedly trying to implement. So I could be really justifiable in the way that we, in the quotes we have heard from him, It'd be really easy and a really simple explanation that would not take very much arguing or debate or anything and just look at it and go, yeah, well, the dude wants to dominate the strike zone. These dudes don't do it at all. Like at all, neither of them. So it's really easy to look at them and and, and say, you know, after the fact, it, it, it will be really easy to look and say, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But, but prior, it's a little bit, tricky to say which one is more likely to stay that's that's tough for me in my head right now I have a number written down that I want but I I don't want to give them the same number and I'm trying to figure out which one I think is more likely I'll, I'll start with this the odds that both of them are gone we'll do them as like a package deal first um the odds that both of them are on the opening day 40-man roster, not even major league roster, 40-man roster. I'm going to go with like 20%. Two out of 10 that both of them are on the 40-man te- the roster next season. Um, individually, I think I'm going to give... What did I give Scopey? Like a three and a half? I think I'll give Willie a three and a half. So I'll put him kind of in the same category as Scope. I might have given Scope a three. Somebody's got to keep track of this. <laughs> it's kind of my job. Um, And Harold, I'll give a three. Harold a three, Scope why is scope into this conversation? Harold a three, Willie a three and a half, both of them a two. That made sense. I hope that came out how how I meant it. Thirty percent. That's way easier. I should just do this out of a hundred and just do like percentages and not this one out of ten, zero out of ten crap. Thirty percent chance in my eyes that. Harold is back next season. 35% chance that Willie is back next season. 20%, maybe even 15% that both of them are back next season. Not impossible. Not impossible. I'd be a little surprised. That one would like actually kind of surprise me a little bit if they were both back. Not impossible, but certainly not likely. Either of them on their own being back would not shock me. Both of them being back would shock me. That's what I've been trying to say. All right. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. Uh, for your next listen, check out the Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert 
Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and his unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Changes are coming. Changes are coming. Um, not sure when or why the Castros became so controversial over the last couple of years, uh, but they have. And there are my thoughts on it. There you go. There are my thoughts on on two guys that uh, have stepped in and probably provided the Tigers more than they initially thought when they acquired them. Harold was an international signing, uh, kind of like a lower budget international signing from a you know almost a decade ago now, maybe even a decade ago now. Um, so you know what I mean. Like that's somebody that that. I don't think we really would have chalked up as like, oh, he'll be, you know, hitting over 270 at the major league level at some point. So shout out to Harold Castro. Uh, like I said, we'll certainly find professional work somewhere. It's just a matter of what level he'll be playing that and what team he'll be playing for. And then Willie, again, we acquired him. He was like a 20 year old, like not, what was he like the eighth or ninth, maybe even lower prospect for Cleveland for half a season of Leonis Martin. Um, and yeah, he, he turned into somebody that was an everyday player for a little bit there at one point. So, uh, got something uh, out of these dudes. They deserve a ton of credit. They worked their way up to the majors, nothing but respect. Uh, but going forward, I, I think I, I, somebody I'll, I'll end the show really quickly. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to just rift here at the end, but I had somebody, uh, tell me that, I, they thought that I was too, that I just thought everybody was going to leave. And that like every, there was a chance that, that, you know, everybody's is below a five and, and probability. And like, that's too negative and too pessimistic. You're right to, to any opinion you have, you know, that's, that I, I've always maintained that. I've always made that clear. Um, I, I love the, the, the debate and the talk of, of just like talking ball with people but for me, I, we all just sat through 162 games of that, right? And I watched every single inning and then had to talk about every single inning for half an hour every day. That was a bad product. That was a train wreck of a season. And I'm not sure... How, maybe maybe this is just how I see it, and, and that's that's I don't know. I don't think anything's wrong, but may, maybe maybe I'm in the minority here. But I don't see how you can watch what we just sat through all summer and go, yeah, you know, everybody will probably be back and should be back. I don't know how that's possible. I I, I don't know how how you can do that. I I don't. So yeah, in my eyes, there's a probably an over 50% chance that like, and you know, that might be 52%, that might be 50, might be a 50-50 thing. But yeah, each player individually, uh, there are very few players that I'm like, yeah, lock for next season. And we're going to keep breaking down more players and you're going to continue seeing that. And there are some players like Erod, I don't think is going anywhere. Javi, like him or hate him, is, I don't think is going anywhere. Like, Riley Green is probably the closest thing to a 10 we have. Like, I'm not trying to say that that every single person should be on the trading block or something, but I, I mean, I, I again, I just don't know how you can watch what we just watched all summer and be like, yeah, well, let's try it again. <laughs> I, I think ch change is not only needed, but I think it's coming. This dude has no emotional attachment. He hasn't had to sit through all these dudes. He didn't sign these. These aren't Scott Harris dudes. He didn't bring them in. He didn't draft them. He didn't trade for them. He didn't sign for them. He has zero attachment to like 95% of the players on this roster. I, I, I think we, I think we got to buckle up. I think we got to buckle up. It'll be eventful. We'll cover it all here. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for real. Uh, peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. 40 minutes. Golly. One of these days I'll make a 30-minute episode.
Go Tigers, baby.